Hi everyone. This is a short presentation on how to write abstracts for healthcare professionals. As healthcare professionals, we have great ideas that often impact our practice and patient outcomes. Sometimes these are clinical or practice projects rather than formal research. However, what good are great ideas if they're not shared? And sharing does not always mean that you have to stand up in front of a group of people and talk. You can also develop posters. Posters are pre professionally made yet reasonably priced and are often displayed in a large room with other posters during a face-to-face -face conference. Rather than formal presentations, poster presentations to tend to be small group discussions where just a few interested participants may ask you questions about your project. Poster presentations are a great way to share your work. Of course, abstracts can also be submitted for podium presentations if you are comfortable talking to an audience. If you have been involved with a project that might be helpful to other healthcare professionals, the first step is to look for opportunities to share. Doing an internet search for professional organizations in your specialty area is a good place to start. Once you are on their website, look to see if they host a regional or national conference, and if so, do they have a call for abstracts. Depending on the size of the conference and the organization, a call for abstracts may be posted several months or even up to a year before the actual conference. This allows the organization time to review all submissions, make their selections, confirm with presenters, create their brochure, and advertise for the conference. Professional journals also frequently post a call for abstracts. As you review the call, be sure that the conference is in a location that you are willing to travel to and on dates that you would be available. Once you have found a call for, pro for abstracts that is aligned with your project, it's time to actually start writing your abstract. Most are submitted online and frequently contain specific components including title, purpose, objectives, and a brief description of your project and outcomes. Start with the title. Make it short and concise, usually less than 10 words. Some organizations even have a specific character limit that you shouldn't exceed. It should describe briefly what your project is about, yet be catchy enough to grab the reader's attention. The next is often a short introduction, usually no more than one to two sentences. The introduction describes your project in a little bit more detail than what you can include in the title, and also should grab the reader's attention. The next section is the objectives, and this is what do you hope participants who talk to you about your poster or who attend your podium presentation will walk away knowing or what knowledge will they gain from attending your presentation. The abstract itself or the body or the text should really depends on what type of project you did, whether it's a research project or a clinical or practice project, and that will dictate the components. Also be sure to follow the guidelines from the organization for what's requested in the abstract itself. Be sure to write in past tense because the project should have already been completed and provide only key information. Again, you'll probably have a specific word limit here. The call for abstracts may also include a request for both a short and a long description. It may ask for teaching strategies. And in podium presentations, be sure to include some interactivity here as opposed to simply lecturing. 
You may also be asked to specify how your presentation will align with the conference goals. Additional information is also commonly requested once your abstract is selected. Follow the directions very carefully when you get ready to submit. Check and recheck spelling and grammar. And when ready, submit as specified in their guidelines. Next is the waiting period. Generally, the call also includes information regarding when you can anticipate hearing their decision. When you are notified of acceptance, the organization frequently asks for additional information such as reference lists, copy of your final presentation or handouts, and so on. Be sure to submit those in a timely manner and certainly by the specified deadline. If you're preparing a poster, you can do that using PowerPoint, Keynote, or other software and organize it similar to how you wrote the abstract. Start with a large title across the top of the page, followed by your name and title, as well as any other presenters. The poster is then often divided into several sections with a place for the purpose, objectives, and description of the project, as well as outcomes and what you learned. Congruent visuals should be included, but be sure to use visuals for which you have permission. If you are presenting on behalf of your organization, the name of the organization can be include, included below the title in your name or in a logo format at the bottom of your poster. Some facilities even have a preferred template, and if that's the case, be sure to use that. Once you've designed it, you can transfer uh, the design to the size poster that is requested by the organization hosting the conference. And then there's many printing companies and on-site on line web stores that can make your poster for a reasonable price. The rewards? Well, some organizations may assist you uh, with some of your expenses. Uh, some poster and podium presenters get conference discounts from the organization providing the conference. But you know, the real rewards are intrinsic. The positive feeling of accomplishment, the benefit of sharing with others, and the reward of professional accomplishment. Also, after your presentation, be sure to add your presentation to your resume or CV. Thanks for listening in. I hope you found this to be helpful.